Hello, in this video, I'm going to solve the following problem for you, which is a problem on the topic of polynomial equations. Determine all real solutions of the following equation, x plus 2 times x plus 4 times x plus 6 times x plus 8 equals to 48. That would be a good idea if you pause the video at this point and try to solve the problem yourself first. If you do the calculations correctly, these are the following answers that you will get. x equals to minus 5 plus the square root of 13. x equals to minus 5 minus the square root of 13. If you are interested to see more videos of this type of problems, you, are, uh, you can refer to the following playlist. The link to the PDF file of what you see on the display now will be available on the description below this video. Uh, okay, now let us solve the problem here. Of course, you see that this is a fourth degree polynomial. So if you just start multiplying them out, might be, it would be hard to find a way to solve it, yes? Because it becomes a complete fourth degree polynomial and solving a fourth degree polynomial in general is not easy, okay? So, we have to be a little bit more creative. So, instead of blindly start multiplying them, let us try to organize them in a way that might be the idea of the auxiliary variable comes to our help and can we can solve the problem using that idea simpler. If you have this in the back of your head, might be it is not hard to see, it would be wiser if I multiply these two, because you know that I have four numbers to multiply. So it doesn't matter in which order I multiply. So I decide to multiply this with that <coughs> and multiply these two. And then when, when I found the answer to these two products, then I will multiply them again. Yes. So that's one way. But why this is useful, you will see it in a moment. So let us say that, okay, I want to multiply this with the last one x times x is x squared, a, x times 8, it becomes 8x, 2 times x, it becomes 2x, and then 2 times 8 is 16. This is the result when I get this, when I multiply these two, what is the result here? This becomes x squared plus 4x plus 6x, and then finally plus 24. And this is equal to 48. Yes? And now you see why this was useful to multiply them in this order. Because 8x plus 2x is 10x. 4x plus 6x is also 10x. So if I simplify it, it becomes x squared plus 10x plus 16. And on the right-hand side, I will have x squared plus 10x plus 24 is equal to 48. And now the idea, uh, sorry, this is 24. Uh, now the idea becomes clear because then you see that this part is repeating itself here and there in my equation. This is already telling you that if you take this as an auxiliary variable, for example, if I take this one to be y, yes, what happens? Then I will have y plus 16 times y plus 24 is equal to 48. And that is a standard quadratic equation that in the worst case scenario, you can use ABC or PQ formula to solve it. But of course, we can do a little bit better. If I take this one to be Y and then take one this one to be Y, then I have to multiply Y plus 16. So let me write it here with a different color because that's not what I'm going to do. And I will write it as Y plus 24 is equal to 48. Then when I multiply them, so I have to finally multiply 16 by 24. It's not a big deal, but I want to tell you, you should be more efficient if you can. Okay, so that's not wrong. If you like it, you can continue like this, find y. After you found y, put it here, and then finally find x. But can I do it wiser? Yes, I can. For example, another idea is to take the whole package here to be y. Okay, if this is y, this is the same thing, 8 units more. So then this becomes y plus 8. 
And then I have to solve this equation, y times y plus 8 is equal to 48, okay? This is much simpler than the previous case. So it is important to know that, don't think just like this, that okay, one thing that is repeating itself, let me just immediately take that one to the auxiliary variable. Of course it will help you, I'm not denying that, but might be you have better options available, always think about it. Okay, is there any better option? Because it's, if I still with, go with that one, then it becomes y squared plus 8y, and then I have to move 48 to the left. It's not a big problem. I can solve it. I can use ABC formula or PK formula, or I can use my uh, uh, factorization skills if it is possible. I need two numbers with some 8 and the product minus 48. I don't think that is easy. Is, is it easy to find? Yes, there are 12 and 4, yes? So, for example, minus... 4 and plus 12. The sum is 8 and the product is minus. Anyway, you have three options to choose here. But can I do it still better? Yes, I, I would say so. Because if you try to exploit symmetry, that would be a good idea. So what I will do, I will say that let x squared plus 10x plus 20 be y. You might say that's a little bit weird, why 20? Because you immediately see that I will have symmetry at the end, why? If I take this one to be y, then what happens? x squared plus 10x plus 16 is not my y, it's four units less than my y. So the left one can be written as y minus four. But now the good news is that what is the second factor? The second factor is four units more than the y. So this becomes y plus 4. And on the right-hand side, I will have 48. But this one is extremely easy to solve because by symmetry, I don't have the crossing term. The crossing term is 4y minus 4y, they are gone. So this is a conjugate rule. So this becomes eight y squared minus 16 equals to 48. And I hope that you agree this is the simplest possible form compared to the previous scenarios, yes? So I move 16 to the right, it becomes 64, and then y squared is 64, so what is y? y is plus or minus 8. Then I have to solve, of course, if y is equal to 8, then this should be equal to 8, x squared plus 10x <clears throat> plus 20, is equal to 8. When I move 8 to the other side, x squared plus 10x plus 12 becomes 0. But this does not have any solutions. Why? Because the discriminant, let me use the ABC formula case, b squared minus 4ac, b squared becomes 100 minus, oh, it has a solution by the way, sorry, minus 4 times this times that is minus 48. So this becomes 52, yes? So might be here, the PQ formula was simpler. Whenever this number is one and this middle number is even, PQ formula is a little bit faster. But anyway, I use this one and I see that the discriminant is positive, so it guarantees that I will have two solutions. So what are the solutions? X equals to minus B plus or minus the square root of D divided by two. And as you see that, because the discriminant is not a complete square, so it was not easy to guess two numbers whose sum is 10 and the product is 12. So that's why I didn't follow the factorization method. Okay, so what is minus b? Minus b is minus 10 plus or minus the square root of 52 divided by 2. Okay, but this can be simplified a little bit more, so that's why I'm saying that if in this case you have used PQ formula, you already got it in the simplest possible form. But let us simplify it here to practice a little bit more. So I will get minus 10, but you know that 52, square root of 52, can be viewed as the square root of 4 times 13, but the square root of 4 is 2, so it becomes 2 square root of 13. So then I will write plus or minus 2 square root of 13 divided by 2, then I factor a 2 out, so it becomes minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 13, divided by 2, and these 2 and that 2 are gone, I will get minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 13. And these are exactly the answers provided by the problem. 
but it is not guaranteed yet that the second scenario will not work. You have to check it, it's part of the solution, but as you will see, there are no real solutions for that equation, okay? So I will choose my minus eight for y this time, so I will put it back here. So what happens? So it becomes x squared plus 10x plus 20 is equal to minus 8. I move it to the left. Okay, so if you don't mind, with, with the experience we got there, so let me use the PQ formula this time. So discriminant for the PQ formula is P over 2 to the power of 2 minus Q. But this is my P divided by 2, 5, 5 to the power 2, 25. And this is my Q minus 28, and you see that's negative. So when the discriminant is negative, the equation does not have any real roots. So finally, I see that I have only two roots, and those are the roots that was given in the problem. Yes? So the idea of auxiliary variable is very helpful here, but my point of putting this exercise is to want to teach you that, okay, sometimes the, uh, the most trivial auxiliary variable to come, that comes to mind is not necessarily the most efficient one. If you think a little bit deeper, you might actually facilitate your problem solving a lot. Okay, so I hope that this video was useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.